to the engineering. Welcome to EngSoc Council on this day, October 10th, 2021. Um, to get things started, I'm actually going to wait for the agenda to pop up on the screen so all you lovely people can see it. Perfect. So first things first, um, attendance, which I believe if there's not a link already, we can get a link thrown in chat, but there should be a link in the email that was sent out too. Okay, so yeah, just fill that out. Uh, another quick reminder as well for anyone who's just getting in, uh, if you're a voting member, please put an asterisk next to your name and don't forget to put your personal pronouns as well. Awesome. All right. Now, moving well along, uh, we'll go into the adoption of uh, the agenda. So. Motion one, whereas an agenda was made and whereas we need to approve it, be it resolved that council approve the agenda of the council meeting of Monday, October 4th, 2021, as seen on the Engineering Society website, moved by Andrew Time De Silva, seconded by Nick for council, Neo Klaus. Do we have an opening at all? Uh, Andrew De Silva, Director of Governance. We have a few things that were added um, and I'll go over them now. So. First thing I was added was um, the motion to approve the operational budget for 2021-2022. Second um, was that the previous mover of this motion seven could not attend, so we um, switched motioner. And then lastly, Kai's meeting. I unfortunately did not get it in the copy and paste, so there it is now. And that is all. All right. Perfect. So um, now we will open the motion for debate. So, uh, oh. just give it a minute. Uh, everyone open up the speaker's queue. It's in the email that was sent out. But yes, seeing, seeing no names in there, do we have a closing? <laughs> okay, so with no closing, uh, be it res uh, whereas an agenda was made and whereas we need to approve it, be it resolved that council approve the agenda of the council meeting of Monday, October 4th, 2021, as seen on the Engineering Society website, moved by Andrew De Silva, seconded by Nick Neo Klaus. Voting will open now. And just a reminder, if you don't have a vote, please just don't click anything. Okay, perfect. Motion passes, we have an agenda, very exciting. Now we can actually get this on the road. Okay, uh, speaking of agenda, moving to the next item in it, we'll go to motion two. So whereas it has been some amount of time since the last council, and whereas Matthew wrote the minutes and they need to be approved, be it resolved that council approve the minutes of the council meeting of Monday, September 20th, 2021, as seen on the Engineering Society website, moved by Andrew, thank you, De Silva, seconded by Nick, Matthew, Neo Klaus. Do we have an opening? Seeing none, I'll give people a minute if they, I'll open, we'll open the motion to debate. Feel free to throw your name in the speaker's queue. Seeing no names, do we have a closing? All right. Whereas it's been some amount of time since last council, and whereas Matthew wrote the minutes and they need to be approved, be it resolved that council approve the minutes of council meeting of Monday, September 20th, 2021, as seen on the Engineering Society website, moved by Andrew De Silva, seconded by Nick Neo Klaus. We will now open voting. Oh, motion passes. Very good stuff. All righty. Now, because I love the sound of my own voice, we will get into speaker's business, which is my business. So a couple of things on the docket today, uh, but first and foremost, I, I would just once again like to acknowledge that Queen's University is situa situated 
on traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. Uh, and we're grateful to be able to live and learn on this land. And then I would also further like to acknowledge that uh, this September 30th that just passed marked the first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. And so I just, I hope for everyone in attendance and everyone watching this, that you're able to take that day to reflect, continue educating yourself um, and, and do whatever else you, you felt you need to do that day. Um, moving along there, I will once again, just remind everyone to please put personal pronouns at the end of your name. Um, if you just right click on your kind of Zoom profile, you should have the option to rename and you can add them in. Um, and then again, if you're voting member asterisk in front of the name, uh, but I think everyone's already done that. So that's all good. A couple of other little uh, housekeeping things just for, just for my sake more than anything. Uh, whenever you're, you're speaking, please state uh, your name and your position. So uh, for anyone who is potentially their first time at council, if you put your name in the speaker's queue, uh, you'll put your name and position in there and then I'll call on you. So if I put myself in, it'd be like speaker Neoklaus. And then I'd be like Nick Neoklaus, Engstock speaker, and I would go into my point. So uh, no worries if you forget a couple times, but I'll just probably eventually remind you. Um, also, for anyone who looked ahead at the agenda, we will be electing some positions today. So I'll raise this again there. Uh, but you know, when people are giving their small uh, pitches or their small elevator pitches, you'll have 20 seconds. I'll be timing it. And then I'm going to try to be a little more strict on the time there. So. Uh, I may just have to cut you off. I'm very bad at doing that. So that's why I'm being upfront about it now. <laughs> and finally, I uh, just want to remind people of the different kind of um, hand signals and ways to sort of interject if necessary. So typically you'll use the speaker's cue to, to talk or if you want to you know, uh, ask a question or bring discussion to the table. But if, you, you know, if someone asks a question and you have a direct response to that, if you put your middle finger and your index together, you can provide a direct response to the question being asked. Uh, pinky up could mean two things. So there's point of personal privilege, which is typically used if you need to go and need to proxy your vote. Um, or kind of more commonly, you'll see it for a point of information. So uh, if you have pertinent information on something being discussed that would kind of be additive to the discussion, you wanna add that. So for example, if an event is being discussed and the date is relevant and the date hasn't been mentioned, um, you can either point of information and provide the date if you know it, or you could ask when the date is. Um, but otherwise, please stick to putting your name in the speaker's queue. Okay, that is all of my business. Uh, and we've got a lot of presentations to get into, so I will not take up any more of your time. With that being said, I think we can get into the first presentation, which is the NSOC operational budget for 2021-2022. Uh, am I supposed to begin the presentation now? You still the director of governance? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm super excited to be presenting this budget to all of you. Uh, Andrew, is it possible for me to share my screen? Is that the best way for me to do this? Yep. All right, perfect. I will set that up now. Um, but yeah, no, I'm really excited to be presenting this to all of you. Uh, the EV team and I have worked a uh, like put quite a bit of effort into getting it to where it is now. Um, and I'm really excited for like the projects that we have to present for it. Uh, so without further ado, uh, moving into that, the obviously the main purpose of this budget is largely to help uh, support the values that the engineering society upholds. Uh, and a lot of that is providing services to the um, members of the engineering society. And of course we need to spend money to make a lot of that happen. Uh, and as a main source of revenue for the Engineering Society, this is kind of a breakdown of the major revenue streams. So as you can see, 69% of it comes from student fees, uh, whereas the remaining uh, percentages come from things like the EngServe recovery fee, which is a service provider fee, or CU advertising and question management fee are the main revenue streams. There are also other sources of revenue within each of the director portfolios. So if you've had a chance to look through the budget, you'll see it split up in sheets based on all of the directors. And within some of those, uh, off the top of my head, those are like internal processes and external relations. They also make some form of money and those are mainly used within their own portfolio to uh, run events. But 
but these are the main ones that go more towards the services that aren't revenue generating. So in comparison, uh, the, some of these numbers may feel, may seem like a little uh, uncontextualized. So I've also put previous year's revenues uh, in as kind of reference. So for example, this year, the total revenue comes to about uh, $470,000, whereas previous year's revenue uh, was predicted to be about 360,000. And the main reason for that, like that's a, that's a huge increase. And the reason for that is with the increased number of engineering students here, uh, NSHOC membership has increased. And so even though the student fee has remained relatively static over the past two years, uh, this year it's at 82.33. Uh, because of the increased membership, that's the reason for the uh, main spike in revenue. So, and as for spending, that here's kind of like an overlay as to where most of the uh, cost structures are. As you can see, about 51% of it is actually dedicated to just overhead costs. So that's stuff like the administration expenses, uh, operating expenses, and executive expenses. Um, but the more exciting part of that is the 49%, which is the ED team expenses. Um, and I kind of also put in reference for the previous years, but I've also put in for your student fee, this is where your money is going. So $42 of it is going towards the OVEC cost. Uh, that's just what we need to actually make the engineering society run. Uh, and then the rest of the money goes towards the uh, ED team expenses. So I figured I'd give a couple of examples. I won't go too, in depth because the budget goes pretty well into it. Uh, but I'd like to give highlight some examples of like projects uh, and services that the ED team has set up for this year. Um, so examples of this is like fix and clean and outreach uh, of your money that you're giving to the engineering society. About 69 cents of it is going to the fix and clean. A uh, dollar 90 is going towards outreach. And I have a couple more examples here but I thought it was just kind of helpful to illustrate exactly where your money is going. Um, and you can do the calculation pretty easy from the budget that's been submitted over. Um, so I definitely recommend having a look through that if you're curious as to see exactly what your money is going to. But they're all really exciting projects. They're all things that uh, everybody is able to attend. And I think that the main point of this budget as well is to kind of just illustrate and like justify why we're, um, spending the money that we are and kind of justifying these purchases. So, and then uh, this is kind of just an overview of the ED team as a whole. So those are kind of some specifics, but uh, these are where all of the, I, you can almost say it like rankings between all the directors as to who's spending their money where. And I really would challenge all of you uh, if you're interested to kind of like ask each of these individual directors as to why they're spending the money and kind of get them to justify it. Because it is important that like this money is being used properly and we're held accountable. Um, and I think it's the best, uh, the best way to do that is just to uh, pay a very close attention to it and kind of approach all of those. Some of the main ones here is like PP Ops has quite a high expense and that's largely because there's a capital funds donation happening this year. That's largely just so that the money can be used where it's necessary. And the way that that access to the money happens is by uh, putting in a request. So it's a very good way to kind of hold money and also have more long-term stability for the engineering society. And the other one is like external relations. That's because there's a lot of events running, which have a lot of costs. Um, and same thing with internal processes also has similar events running, but that's kind of just an overview. Uh, if you're curious about it, feel free to ask me questions afterwards. Um, and I guess the main point here is just the net surplus for this year comes to about uh, $4,000. So that's a break-even percentage of about 2%, which is actually fairly close given the scale of the, the budget that this year has. But that's I also kind of wanted to highlight that that's including a contingency of 25%. Um, and so if you exclude that contingency, the break-even percentage becomes 26%, where 10% is a pretty healthy one. So that contingency is really helpful. And I also wanted to highlight the fact that with the transition from online into in-person, a lot of the semester one in-person events, which have fairly high costs, uh, that is kind of like a case by case as to which ones will have those in-person costs as opposed to online costs. So that's another point just to keep in mind with this net surplus. Um, should events be canceled, the main solution there is that it will definitely be 
uh, handled case by case in terms of what that money is uh, going to be used for, whether it's for other projects. Um, it's definitely, we want to make sure that this money is being put to as good a use as possible. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like a really quick highlight. I'm not sure whether people have actual questions about it, if you've had a chance to read through the operational budget, but I feel like I'd definitely like to invite all of you to ask me questions. I kind of know this budget like the back of my hand at this point and ask all the directors questions about their specific portfolios. If there's expenses you have questions about, they're definitely the go-to people. Uh, and I'd really recommend you to challenge them on some of them. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Director Butler. Um, I see that we have uh, Tai Two President Takamoto in the speaker's queue. Yeah, uh, just a quick question. So I noticed on one of your slides, there was a line for just breaking down some of those smaller costs that students pay. Um, and awards banquet, is that the NSHOC awards banquet? And if so, how come students are putting a lot more money towards that than they are towards Fix and Clean or some of those other initiatives that were on that page? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely would then invite uh, Director of Internal Processes, Evan, to kind of explain that one. That's part of his budget. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it to him if, he has, if he's here at the moment. Yeah, for sure. If I can just go ahead. Yeah. Name and position, director. Perfect. Yeah. So, Evan Ray, director of internal processes. Um, yeah. So, those specific costs for the, the banquet um, are based on past years where it ran in person. I'm hoping to run it in person this year. Um, and those costs are basically set on where the location that it takes place, which is the Delta Marriott. Um, so, those are the lowest costs we could achieve. Um, so, that's basically set. That's why it's, it's that price versus like a fix and clean event. That makes more sense. Yeah, I was thinking another virtual one and I was like, oh, okay, thanks. Okay. Um, fourth year faculty board proxy, Matthews. Hi, uh, Peter Matthews, proxy for the fourth year faculty board rep. Uh, first, I was wondering if you could explain a little bit in more detail what that end serve recovery fee actually is. Benjamin Foss, Vice President of Operations. Um, I can answer that, Peter. Basically, Entry Serve Recovery Fee is stuff that the Engineering Society buys on behalf of the services that we then essentially invoice the services for. So that's just the money coming back from the services that we've already bought. Um, if you look at the budget summary page, there's like admin, the whole admin expenses page. Um, portions of that are used by the services. So they pay us back through the Entry Serve Recovery Fee. A, looks like your name's in there again, so a follow-up, uh, Proxy Matthews? Uh, Peter Matthews, Proxy for fourth year faculty board. It's not a follow-up question, it's a separate question. Um, uh, you uh, mentioned that we had an increase in revenue this year because of the increased number of students that are now in engineering. And I was just wondering, are we, well, obviously, presumably those, you know, increased number of first years are going to continue to be here for the next four years, but are we anticipating that the increased number of students being accepted in first year, is that going to be a permanent increase that's going to continue to increase our budget over the next following years? Uh, Mike Butler, Director of Finance. I would say that that's definitely something more with a faculty decision, I suppose. I'm not sure whether we as Angela can really guess as to whether that's a point of information towards budget. Uh, point of information, Kai Edwards, Vice President, uh, I almost said Psy Tutu, Vice President of Student Affairs. Um, so we have been in discussions with the faculty throughout the summer and leading up to the, uh, I guess, reveal of the number of first year students. Um, so they had another issue with their matrix that they use in terms of accepting certain numbers of students. Um, 
this year they anticipated it, that more students would defer from Ontario than the actual numbers. Um, so hopefully we will not see this trend continue in future years. It's definitely something that we're advocating um, for because the university would need, I guess, more supports available for students in order to support that kind of increase in class size. Um, the other reason that we got more money this year is because the student choice initiative did not go through. So we got 100% of the student fee um, as opposed to not usually getting that or part of it being opt-outable. Uh, President Bissell. Christina Bissell, President. I would also like to add that the number of incoming students is typically disclosed to us as we're making the budgets. And so, and that's over the course of the summer. So once that information is known to us, then we kind of account for it in the next year when making next year's budget as we did this year. So planning for the long term in that aspect should not be an issue. All right. It looks like we've reached the end of the speaker's queue. I'll give it another couple seconds in case there are any final straggler questions. Okay, I do believe there is a motion later around budget as well. So um, if more stuff comes up, then there will be debate on the motion. So to keep this show moving along, first of all, thank you again, uh, Director Butler. And for our next presentation, we have the Q-score presentation. What information, uh, it seems that Q score is not here. Um, so I'd like to amend the agenda to put uh, their presentation, I guess, towards the end. Um, and if for some reason they don't show up, it'll be pushed, it'll be uh, striked from this agenda. Director De Silva, that. Andrew De Silva, Director of Governance, uh, we'll have to run a motion for that. So I'll run a motion to change the agenda. Yeah, um, motion to amend the agenda to move the Q-score presentation um, and ratification to the end of council. Can I get a seconder? Seconded. Um, I will add a... Speaker's queue in case there's any debate on the motion. For everyone, just the Q score presentation if there is any debate on the amendment. Okay. Motion passes. <laughs> so we will move the Q-score presentation to the end. There we go. Well, on that note then, that brings us to the summer accountability presentation from BP Ops. Yay, exciting. Um, can I share my screen? I think I should be able to, I am able to. Uh, Slack is in the way. All right. Hello, everybody. I was supposed to do this presentation last council, but I was not at last council, so I'm doing this at this council. Um, I'm going to try and make this fairly quick so that we don't have a three and a half hour council tonight. Um, so Slack is just being not Slack, so Zoom is in the way. Um, yes, yeah, so we started in. Uh, May 1st, um, we were supposed to do 35 hours a week for 16 weeks of the summer, um, which comes up to 532 hours. I had some slow weeks, I had some busy weeks, um, ended up seven hours short, um, but I don't think that is the end of the world. Um, I had planned to do 10 annual projects and six new projects, which came up to 124 days of projects, um, which I was never going to get through all of, and I knew that going in. 
Um, I will now go over most of the projects that I did do. So yeah, a number of the projects I did were just general exact projects. Um, so static meetings, um, emails, and a lot of random one-off meetings. Um, also did, I created the accountability that we use to track our accountability over the summer. Um, I made that Excel sheet for all the executive. Um, and I also did my accountability for the most part. I missed some weeks here and there when things were really busy, uh, but not to the end of the world. Did first aid training, that was pretty fun. Um, living work start positive space. I also still have to do um, my smart serve training. Uh, and then we did some pre-orientation week stuff and I attended SOAR, which was actually quite a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so main projects of the summer. I feel like this probably isn't very surprising, but most of what I did during the summer was safety plans and service reopening, which was awesome because we had a ritual this Friday. Tea room has been running um, and CEO did jacket fitting, which was great to see, but that was a lot of my summer. Um, a lot of meetings with faculty, a lot of meetings with the university risk management department, um, AMS exec, and obviously the service managers. Um, but it was quite fun, and I'm very glad to see everything opening up. Um, the other two main parts of my summer were essentially the ops, ops, ops project was really just like weekly duties and some random miscellaneous tasks that didn't fit in anywhere else. Um, so getting payroll set up, getting people to sign contracts and NDAs, um, doing all the BMO sign over documents, getting credit cards, um, preparing business manager training so that the services know how to do their finances meeting with the bookkeeper, um, lots of things in there, maybe not the most interesting to most of you. Um, and I also made a FIPCO project, which was very fun. We get FIPCO soon. Uh, and then the last main project was literally just learning my job. Um, learning my position is quite an onerous task, if I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, reading transition manuals, learning how to use all of our financial tools, all of our SharePoint sites, figuring out how the finance team does things, learning how to do month ends. Um, and this year, more than last year, because everything was online, learning how to handle like physical cash money, um, how to do bank runs and all that lovely stuff, uh, which was quite fun. I now know how to do my job, which is very helpful. Um, there were definitely some unexpected projects. So a little bit of context, not gonna talk about too much. It's a little confidential at this point still. Um, Office 365 migration, so we have been in talks with the AMS about moving to our own um, Microsoft tenants so that we would host our own emails and our own Microsoft suite, um, which is useful in some ways, but demanding in others, um, and the process of getting migrated from the AMS to our own has been definitely a process, um, but we were working on that, still not complete, but it was a lot of my summer. Um, also had a lot of meetings with affiliated groups to talk about debt um, and to talk about budgets, which was quite fun because those are fun solutions to have to come up with. And then, yeah, the last one is another COVID thing. Um, so since COVID has restricted people's access to spaces, a lot of tasks that would otherwise be done by other people are being done by me. Um, sometimes small things like printing, people don't have access to print stuff, so I'm having to print stuff or just logistics of moving things in and out of spaces, dealing with CEO orders, stuff like that. Um, time consuming, but vital for them to be able to reopen. So that has been a big time sink this summer. Um, and then in progress and tabled projects, um, EngSoc, Finance Wikipedia, this is something I wanted to make to help with transition for future years, not something I had time to do, something that my FIPCO is hopefully going to start work on when they are hired. Um, Long-term data analytics, something I've talked about for quite a while now. Looked into it this summer, but have not started. Um, I need to plan to do something more robust in the future. That's probably gonna be a second semester kind of task. Um, I hate Google Drive, that's a fact. Um, I've been working with the Director of Internal Processes to come up with a long-term solution for storing digital files. We have some stuff in place, but me and Evan are, I think, soon. I don't want to say anything to make Evan do something sooner than later, but we are going to be putting some policy in place um, and structuring things a little bit better. So that's sort of half done. Um, squeaky clean, yeah, um, that's another project that I now know how to do, which was nice. Learned how to do that over the summer. Just need to set aside a weekend and do it. Um, mostly just cleaning up QuickBooks, so it's 
makes a little more sense for our incoming business managers next year. Uh, E-transfer improvements. Um, this was another thing that has been attempted for a few years now and has never really been done. Um, it's kind of complicated. Just trying to come up with a method for e-transfers to be able to be tracked better and sent out faster so that people spend less time waiting for their money because that is a big sticking point for my job. Um, and then audit the world. So we have some outstanding engagement reviews to do. Me and Michael both learned how to do them this summer. Um, we just need to set aside probably about a full week to get them done. Um, so that's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, so trying to make this quick, but in conclusion, I learned a lot this summer, which was basically the main goal of my summer. Um, all of the new projects that I want to do, I have scoped out and know how to do them. I just need to set aside the time and get them done. Um, and I spent a significant amount of my time with service reopening. Um, but honestly, I'm very glad to have done that because that seems to have come to fruition and things have opened, which is amazing to see. Last thing I want to talk about is this is what policy states that I need to do over the summer, and I have done all of these things, uh, which is lovely. You can take a look. It's quite a long list. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide, but I will leave the slide up so you can all read through that. But does anybody have any questions about what I did with my summer? Thank you, ZP Ops Frost. If anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in the queue. Seeing no questions, um, I think that's I think that's it. Perfect. Thanks, Ben. Okay. The next presentation on the docket then is our fall term break presentation. Can yeah. I share my screen? Yep. Thank you. Okay, so this is just a short presentation on the fall term break consultation session. So as some of you may know, I've been hopping into some meetings with what is called the fall term break task force. And basically what we're doing is we're sending out a survey that should be live now. I will find out where it is posted Wednesday and have it available for you shortly. I'm sure that we might have gotten an email about it already, um, but this is sort of just to break down what is up with the survey and why we need everybody to fill it out. And my screen is, there you go. So the fall term break task force was established by Send It, and they got student representatives from each different faculty. And they also got faculty and staff and other people in the community to discuss what the fall term break should look for as it has been a topic of discussions for the past four, five years. And they will report back to the Queen's Senate um, in November with a comprehensive recommendation. So where there is a survey, you guys recommend it. We take all the survey response, compile that into a final recommendation to Senate, and then they will either approve it or amend it. Um, for the past four years, Queen of University has had a fall term break. Um, there were a lot of competing factors such as COVID-19, orientation week, et cetera, on what this week or break looked like. Um, so for the period in September 1st to December 23rd, our fall term needs to have 60 available teaching days. So other faculties, they can get by with less, but because we're engineering and we're accredited, there has to be 60. So they're keeping that across the board. And that is why in previous years, some of you may have had that one extra day after week 12, and it was to get that 60th day and compensate for Thanksgiving. 15 days are for fall term final examinations, which also includes week weekdays, but the 60 available teaching days does not include those weekends. Um, there's statutory holidays, which are listed here, but it is also important to note that the National Day of Truth Reconciliation and the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women are days that are specific dates rather than days of the week. And so sometimes those days may fall on the weekend and have no impact on the fall term. So this basically leaves six days, including Remembrance Day, which often you just get an hour off 
um, for other activities, which includes orientation type activities, including residence move-in, the fall term break, and pre-exam study days immediately preceding the December assessment period. So what that looks like can be exemplified here in which we have this Monday off, this Friday off, we'll have Thanksgiving off, December 6th off, as well as the 23rd, which is the day before exams off as well. And that leaves four, six days left to decide whether we want a full form to a break, whether we want a full orientation week that doesn't land on the weekend as it did this year. And so there's a lot of different moving pieces into play. Um, this is just defining what the fall term break is and basically saying that we should not have scheduled classes, we should not have um, other classes to catch up on or any extra work, although you may have um, a project that's due on the weekend of that fall term break. And that's why it says, um, where is it? Oh, it's in a different definition, not bad. Uh, so the survey will be available for most of October. I will get that out to you. We'll probably put it on our Instagram. You'll probably get an email from the university on it. And it's just gonna ask you what you want for the six days, the impact of those activities on you and what your preferred schedule placement for the fall term break would look like. So if you really liked how it was two years ago where we had two days attached to the end of things, uh, to the, at the end of October, let them know that and we'll see what happens. Um, if you do have any feedback on anything or questions, you can ask me now or you can email the registrar at queensu.ca. And I believe that concludes the presentation. I would also like to note that orientation week is probably one of the biggest factors that um, us as engineering students do face um, just because of all the time and effort that goes into it. So if we don't get those days allocated, then they will typically um, be integrated within the first week of classes, which puts a lot of um, time obligations onto everybody involved with that event. And the other thing is that I believe there's a minimum of three days for pre-examination periods at the end of week 12. Um, but I could be um, misremembering that, but I think we can open it up to questions now. Thank you, President Fizzle. First on the Thank queue you. is Vice President Student Affairs, Miska Edwards. Uh, Kai Miska Edwards, Vice President Student Affairs. Less of a question, more of, I guess, a general history on this. Um, when Christina mentioned that we typically got two days, um, it was intended as kind of an extension of Thanksgiving. So we almost had, I believe, with that weekend, it was Point of information. Yes. Um, those two days were at the end of October. They were not attached to Thanksgiving weekend. Right now, for the past two years, we had fall term break attached to Thanksgiving weekend. And that is why it accumulates to an entire week. But that is not feasible with the sessional dates we have for orientation week. OK, I am definitely misremembering mis it then. Um, it could it not have fallen on Thanksgiving, depending on the sessional dates? Um, regardless, uh, in typical years, as Christina mentioned, uh, with a full orientation week, I know it's nice to have a full break, um, but when it comes to, I guess, first year students, orientation activities, uh, it ends up being very cramped. Um, so I feel like, Oh, I lost my train of thought. Never mind. Um, sorry, Christina. Yeah, tangent. Okay. Um, we will go to the next in the speaker's queue then. So, Junior Senator Ocha. Uh, hey there. Uh, hey there. Uh, uh, want to mute yourself? Sorry, I'm in the room with you. Sorry. Uh, I just have a quick question. So when you said the survey is going to be sent out, that's I'm assuming that's all of uh, engineering, not just council. And my second question is like it's um, when like considering the fall term break and stuff, are we also like considering individuals that perhaps live in BC or outside of Canada where 
like it's a lot harder for them to see their family in just like two days compared to a week or Christina Bissell, President, direct response. Uh, to your first question, it will be sent out to all university students and I believe faculty and staff as well. Um, to your second to the second question, the survey does account for those responses and feedbacks. And so I highly encourage you to state those in your survey if that's what you would prefer and whether you want the dates to be attached to Thanksgiving to give that extended time period. I would also like to kind of add to what Kai was saying earlier in when you're giving your preference for the allotted days, definitely think about the stresses that you have in your life. And so those three ones are gonna be transitioning back to Queens, move in, orientation week, all that fun jazz. Second one is gonna be midterms. Um, some people might find that the having a break in the middle kind of disrupts their rhythm, or it just isn't as important as having that first week directly completely dedicated to classes rather than orientation activities. And the last one is days between classes and examination days. So just kind of picking where you wanna allocate your stress days. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, Vice, Pre Vice President of Student Affairs, Niska Edwards, you remembered. Yes, um, Kaya Niska Edwards, Vice President of Student Affairs. I remembered what I wanted to say. It was partially a question. Um, so when it comes to, I guess, you mentioned that the survey is going out to all students. Does this mean that our sessional dates are impacted by the choices of students and other faculties, or is this specific uh, to engineering? So for example, if the majority of arts and science department uh, decides that they would like the week instead of orientation activities, Will that impact, I guess, our sessional dates or are we independent? Christina Bissell, President, Direct Response. This survey is to determine the sessional dates, propose um, a fall term break date for Senate, for the entire university as Senate oversees the entire university. Orientation sessional dates, we can tell them when we want classes to start basically. Um, but what actual orientation dates look like is left to another organization. I believe that is Senate or orientation roundtable. And so they could decide based on the dates proposed that they need to start a week earlier or they're going to be integrated with classes. We don't know. But if they have those sessional dates to work with in that we want three days at the beginning attached to Labor Day, then those days would probably be chosen for orientation week. Thanks everyone for the great discussion. I'll give another couple of seconds just in case there's any last minute questions. Point of information, Christina Bissell, president. Um, we will be looking at what other universities have done as well when compiling information to propose to Senate. Okay. Seeing no other names in the speaker's queue and on that point of information, Thank you very much, President Bizzle. I think we can move along to the next presentation, which should be the EDII action plan for 2021-2022. Mm -hmm is presenting that should be able to screen share now, hopefully. Hi, is that you or do you want me to do? I can, um, I can share my screen. Are we both doing it? Uh, if you'd like. All right, one second. Um, I would like to preface this presentation that it's not in PowerPoint format. It's a Word document that we're just going to be running through and kind of highlighting the key initiatives that we will be taking on this year. Any initiatives that you may have seen last year that we are not doing this year are um, accounted for in the, I believe it's the appendix. There's also links to the previous accountability report and action plan from the 2020 to 2021 academic year in Appendix Alpha of that report. 
and a lot of the initiatives are being carried forward from last year with some new initiatives highlighted at the beginning of the report. So if you have any questions or specific initiatives you'd like us to address in more detail, please let us know in the discussion period, as right now we'll kind of just uh, give one to two sentences on what each initiative is and what that's going to look like for this year. Just pulling it up now. Okay, um, I'm going to turn my camera off for this because my internet is not super great. Um, but we'll start with Christina and then kind of hand it off and we'll run through the initiatives that we've been talking about um and as oh sorry i should share my screen first um and if you or you know anyone who's extremely passionate about some of these things and would like to contribute or would like to propose your own kind of um initiative please reach out to us um engineering society has put aside funds to support these kinds of initiatives and we would love to uh support things that you have in mind Uh, yeah, so if Kaya scrolls down to the first initiative, that's basically what the first initiative is. It's just saying that I believe it's one of the budget lines in my personal operating budget, or not personal, the president operating budget. Um, there is a few hundred dollars just allocated for any EDII uh, initiative that may not be able to run um, in a typical year because let's say a design team doesn't have the ability to, um, I don't even think of, I can't think of anything right now, but like any affiliate grade groups, they're more than welcome to fill out a form and request those um, funds just to ensure an equal opportunity for everyone involved. Um, Kara, can you scroll down to the initiatives, please? And can we possibly zoom in a little bit? So the second initiative is the conference on EDII. This initiative is being spearheaded by a director of social issues and director of clubs and conferences who have just hired or are in the process of hiring the chair and will subsequently be hiring a committee. And so this conference is supposed to be open to all engineers to educate them on EDII as well as accessibility and sustainability and provide them an opportunity to share, learn and grow. Um, one of the improvements going on under the VPSA portfolio, uh, specifically with our director of design, is um, reevaluating since we are now, yay, as of uh, last Monday, back in the design bay. So teams are now able to use that space. Um, so that space is not the most accessible for various reasons, tripping hazards, as well as barriers for students with limited mobility. Um, so the goal is to get in there and discuss with teams on how we can help. Um, you know, maybe that means buying different kinds of furniture, things that are more easily pushed out of the way. Uh, we want to make these environments better and more welcoming for students um, to ensure that everyone can contribute equally to our design teams. The bursary program expansion. Um, basically, bursaries are constantly growing and we always want to make everything within the society financially accessible. And so we've increased our budget this year um, by a few thousand dollars, I believe, for bursaries and just to, and so more work will go into that and probably some more policy adjustments to reflect more equitable practices and distributing the bursaries will be addressed this year. Next. The Sustainability and Diversity Job Fair. Um, that's a fair that is being spearheaded by a director of personal professional development to include or, uh, organizations or companies that have a very strong EDII focus within their company's culture and their goals. And so that is to show students that there are opportunities to get involved in an equitable way with your careers and hopefully um, provide more opportunities as well. Again, the director of personal development put an EDII in the workplace module. And so that's, I believe, is going to be um, 
like sort of like a workshop where they address EDII issues or concerns that can happen in the workplace as a lot of our trainings in the engineering society are a bit more specific to student life here on campus rather than the workforce. And so this is to give the students tools to excel post-graduation. Back to things under my portfolio. Um, one of the things that Andrew is working on this year is improving council's equity practices. So you'll notice that we ask uh, people to put their personal pronouns in their name tag, um, as well as if we transition back to in-person council, that will be included there as well. We are also using closed captioning. Um, and I really encourage you or anyone you know, if you visit council and you think of something that can be done in our online environment, to make things more accessible, um, please let Andrew know and we would love to help accommodate that. Next is also things under me. Uh, so the EDII design team committee. So the goal of this is to provide a space for all of our design teams to meet um, and discuss issues relating to EDII. So things that they're doing to improve their team environment. Um, and really give them the opportunity to work closely with us in the engineering society, as well as the equity team um, to help, help them create lasting change and safer environments for their students. Next, we have the Accessible Spaces Fund. Um, so this is something I'm going to be looking at the framework for this year and trying to build up a report as well as a presentation for council in second semester. Um, basically, the idea is that a lot of us in positions of power uh, sometimes will never face some of the accessibility issues that um, students may face in our society. Um, and we could really spend sit here all day trying to think of different things and never actually hit the nail on the head. So the idea of this is to provide students a way to seek those resources themselves to be able to have the funding to support changes that they need to see in order for things to be more accessible for them. Um, so I'm very excited about this. And uh, if you have any questions about this, I really encourage you to uh, read this PDF. It was, I believe Andrew included it, or if he didn't, it will be included in a follow-up. Follow -up. Um, Yes, and I will hand this one off to Christina. Oh, and also email us anytime, please. Um, we would we love to chat about these initiatives. Yes, uh, so the next few initiatives are, um, they were proposed by our services and have been um, discussed with the advisory board. Um, so they have already been improved in that sense, but we included them here because they are impacting our society as a whole. So the first one is increased collaboration with EDI based groups at Queens. So this one typically focuses around um, Clark Hall Pub, Tea Room and CEO. And so Clark Hall Pub is aiming to work with more local businesses to support minority groups. The Tea Room is will hopefully have an indigenous art gallery event and CEO is planning to have more social movement themed clothing such as the Girl Power uh, line of clothing that will be coming, I believe, in the winter semester. The second is increased accessibility in services spaces. So this one is just now that we're finally back in our spaces or starting to, um, we can sort of look out for any accessibility um, issues with our spaces or any practices that these um, services have. I would also like to note that Clark Hall Pub is not wheelchair accessible, but that is not something that we will be reviewing this year as it has been reviewed extensively last year and previous years. And through thorough consideration, the financial costs and university policies made this initiative infeasible for the time being. Um, if you have any concerns about that, please email me and we can discuss further. Uh, the tea room menu revamp and promoting local so they're hoping to support more local um, vendors especially um, ones that have plant-based foods and have a sustainable as aspect to uh, mirror their three pillars increase merchandise accessibility so ceo is they've increases they have ceo increases the prices of jackets each year to correspond with inflation um, this year, I don't believe it was that much, but they still increased at the same amount, which allowed for more money to be contributed to bursaries. However, I believe Delina or Ben can talk more to that, um, which we can go over in the discussion period. Um, 
spend or cross by point spending of operations, operations point of okay. information. Um, it only increased by I think two dollars this year. So we kept the jacket prices um, very similar to last year. Thank you. Nice. Love Chris. Yeah. And they're also hoping to just make uh, more more um, sizes available for their general clothing. Increase accessibility to paper content and press nights. Um, this initiative is increasing the accessibility of Golden Words paper to those who are visually impaired. And so they are making all their issues available online with the compatible text to speech um, feature, as well as um, closed captioning on all their podcasts. Uh, CEO is also trying to increase representation of their models and they are going to do this um, as well through focusing on more EDII training. Icon equipment list for the visually impaired. So this list will also be available on the website and have text-to-speech um, availability so students can see online whether the icons have a specific item or not. And finally, uh, icons similar to council are now including pronouns on their board when they are in operation. Next, we're gonna move into previously established initiatives from 2021 to 2020. I mean, from 2020 to 2021. So these initiatives were either completed last year or recommended last year for us to continue. Um, such things include engineering bursaries for personal tutors, as I mentioned last council as part of our summer project. And so this is going to um, be continue work um, over the semester and Hopefully we can see that being implemented by next semester. I'll let Kaya talk about training revamp. Yeah, so training revamp kind of began last year with last year's uh, director of HR and officers in collaboration with the director of social issues. Um, so that's something that we are going to be continuing this year and something we've already started in the summer. Big shout out to Jeevan and his team. They did a lot of really great research um, so we on the HR side are very excited to be able to put things together. Um, this is something we plan on doing kind of a, a review yearly to make sure that our content is um, up to standards when it comes to EDII um, and be sure that we're really providing our student leaders with the tools that they need to be successful in their roles. Next, we have the orientation week survey and report. So right now there's an orientation week survey asking students feedback on how the events um, occurred this year and any um, accessibility, equity, et cetera, issues that they may have seen. And so we want those feedback so we can incorporate it into next orientation week and just constantly growing and improving. Um, so that information will be available shortly. I mean, the results from the survey will be available shortly. However, the survey is still open now and I believe it's closing sometime at the end of this week. So I highly I encourage, encourage you all to participate yeah. in the survey. Thank you, Jeeva. Especially Jeeva, for the first years. Especially the first years who participated yes. in the event. Yeah, next we have a bunch of EDI events planned through the director first year. Um, so he has events for women in science in collaboration with Women in Science and Engineering, um, which is one of our groups supporting minority genders in STEM, as well as activities for Black History Month um, and to support Indigenous students. Um, so there are some goals from this year, as well as um, the intention to pass it on to allow some of these ideas to be further developed and hopefully um, built upon in subsequent years. Yes. And then the next session section kind of just highlights some things that we're continuing to practice this year that were implemented last year, such as mandatory hiring questions. Um, our student research page is still up on the website. Um, the website still has the accessibility feature. Um, many of the, ex um, the executive director team, I believe all of us have been doing work start training. Um, we have also, we're also continuing the Black Lives Matter patches. There's menstrual products available in the ILC right now. And we are having continual discussions with the faculty on implementing gender neutral washrooms in the ILC. However, right now there are gender, watch, net, gender, gender neutral washrooms in Goodwin and Dupuy. And so you can 
go to those buildings as they are directly connected to the ILC until we can implement a better long-term sustainable solution. Yeah, for the short term, um, they're working on increased signage with more clear directions to make sure that students know where these washrooms are. Um, and if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Uh, we are more than happy to discuss this, um, as well as to reach out to the faculty. Thank you very much. That concludes our presentation. Thank you, President Bizzle and Vice President Miska Edwards. Um, Y'all know the drill, discussion period time now, and I see Sci22 President Takamoto is in the queue. Uh, great presentation, guys. Thanks for all of that information. Really great to hear that EDI is a main focus of the exec. Um, so kind of a question, kind of a suggestion. You were talking about the icons looking at getting more accessible technology. Um, and I'm just wondering if that's being done in partnership or if they've consulted the Accessible Technology Center on campus. I know Ann Newman, the accessibility, accessible technologist, I don't remember what her exact title is, um, is a really great resource and she knows just about every single accessible technology out there. Um, and they already have very accessible facilities for students to use. They're targeted at students with accessibility needs um, because you have to be registered to use the facility there, but they already have a lot of the technologies that students might need on hand. Um, and they already have all of the engineering software downloaded onto their computers as well. Christina Bissell, president. Um, I do not believe that the initiative was outlining new technologies for the icons to rent out. I think that's a great idea for them to direct students to Ann Newman and to register with her. But what we were talking, what I was trying to explain was um, on their website with their list of equipment, students can use the text to speech um, feature that they have implemented on the website to listen to what equipment they can rent um, uh, okay. if they were to use the icons instead of going and realizing they don't have a charger or something along those lines. I'm misunderstanding. Thanks. All right. Seeing no other names in the queue, I just want to thank our presenters again for a wonderful presentation and some really phenomenal initiatives. Um, Similar to what President Takamoto said, it's nice to see the focus on EDI. I think it really is. Okay. Awesome. That note, that does bring us back around to the Q score presentation if Q score is here currently. Um, Adam Fell, Director of Clubs and Conferences. Unfortunately, the Q score uh, exec is not present. So, motion to uh, amend or strike this from the agenda. Seconded. Director De Silva. And just the Director of Governance, I will do that now. Point of privilege, Christina Bissell. President, can we table the motion to next council and the presentation? Do we need a motion to amend the amendment? I was, <laughs> I was looking into that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I... Or no, because we didn't vote on the first amendment. Yeah. Hi, Edwards, um, Vice President of Student Affairs, point of information. We did vote on the first amendment to move it. Um, it did pass, so the presentation was changed. Um, although we still have to vote on this new um, removal of the motion slash presentation from this agenda, we could table it as well. Um, but I don't know if that matters if we table it versus strike it. But information, I think in the original amendment, Christina mentioned if the exec didn't show up, we would push it to next council. And we've already voted on that. Okay. 
That is a good point of information. I thank forgot you, about Julia. that. Yes, thank you, Julia. Um, we're all good to go then. Perfect. Oh, good. Good stuff. So, motion to table them or no? Um, um, was I was included in the original motion, I believe, is what okay. Charlie mentioned. Yeah. Okay. So on that note, then we can move into new business. Okay, so motion number three. Whereas we need a committee to communicate externally, and whereas it's time to get this party started, be it resolved that council elect blank, blank, and blank to XCOMCOM according to bylaw 9B, moved by Aiden, let's go get that bread, Shimizu, seconded by Christina, excommunication is key, Bizzle. Do we have an opening from either of the movers? We do. Uh, Aiden Shimizu, Director of External Relations. Um, so today we will be electing three voting members into this um, committee. So the three members have to be voting members, so anyone with a star next to their name. Um, and note that we'll be electing two first years next council who don't need to be voting members. But for this one, it's just gonna be three voting members regardless of their year. Um, and just for like time commitment, it's it's looking about to be to be about bi-weekly meetings for this committee, um, but obviously variable with your schedules and with school. So a quick explanation of the committee. Um, essentially, we will be examining how you should develop relationships with external bodies as a society. Um, this includes other schools. So like a bunch of other engineers, any school with an engineering program. Um, we're also going to be looking into their policies to determine how we can better ours. Uh, we also want to investigate if we should continue with our ESCO membership for the following years uh, and look into changes we'd like to see from the CFES, with it, which is the Canadian Federation of Engineering Students. And lastly, we're going to be compiling a verbal report for AGM. Great. Thank you, Director Shimizu. So um, as Vice President of Student Affairs Nisi Edwards said in the chat, if you would like to nominate someone, please put your name in the speaker's queue for motion three, and we will get this nomination show started with Vice President of Student Affairs, Nisca Edwards. Kaya Niska Edwards, Vice President of Student Affairs. Uh, I nominate Ali Bakit. Uh, thank you, Seconded. I respectfully decline. Okay, uh, Sai 24 President Bakit. Uh, Ali Pete, Section 4 President. I nominate Haley Galsworthy. Seconded. Seconded. Galsworthy, do you accept or respectfully decline? Sorry, um, Haley Galsworthy, Vice President of Class of 25. Um, I accept. Hey, okay, wonderful. Uh, Sci 2 2 President Takamoto. Julia Takamoto, Sci 2 2 Prez. Um, don't know if it's allowed. We've allowed it in the past. Can I just collectively nominate all of the frosh that are present today? Point of, inform point of information. Um, can I speak? Is that how that works? Yep, that's um, good. Okay. Aiden um, position. Aiden Sim is the director of external relations. Um, I I would love for all the frosh to be on the committee, and um, you are all totally welcome if you get nominated today to accept. But just know that next year will or sorry next council we will be electing two first year members as well. So if you want to wait till then, you can also wait till then. However, you're free to accept now. Can I just, why are we doing it in two separate ones if they're here today? 
um, because the, because sorry in Shimizu director of external relations um, because the two first years are not don't need to be voting members and therefore it would be nice to expand that to uh, allow any first years want to join and not just those at council and this was a little bit rushed so I didn't have time to be able to um, market it as the comm team is very busy so I, I just want to open it to everyone and make sure that everyone knows that they're able to and not just council. Thanks. Oh, Sachi, President Takamoto, did you want to nominate all the first years still? Sure. <laughs> it's up to them if they want to accept. Seconded. <laughs> okay. For any Sci 25s president, uh, uh, president, any Sci 25s present, uh, you can either choose to respectfully decline or accept the nomination. And maybe just because it's for all of you, if you want to do that in the chat, that would be aces. I will just, perhaps while we're waiting for those to roll into the chat, either acceptances or respectful declines. Okay, nice. Um, I will just, let junior Senator Oja also do their nomination. I think. Sorry, I was gonna, I was gonna nominate a frosh too. So I, uh, yeah, we're, we're good. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Vice President Operations Frost. Yeah, Vice President Operations Ben Frost. I nominate Noah Wyman. Seconded. Thank you very much, but I have to respectfully decline. I see um, Kalena and Haley in the speaker's queue, but I'm oh, going to assume that's just- information that was um, Kai Edwards, vice president, uh, I almost said side two, two, Vice President Student Affairs. Um, that was just me keeping track of who, who has said yes in the chat. Um, however, I would like to nominate someone if I can also do that at this time. Seeing no one else in the speaker's queue ahead of you, you sure can. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Um, I nominate Julia Takamoto. Seconded. Respectfully decline. Director of Storm Relations, Shimizu. Uh, Director of Storm Relations, Aiden Shimizu. I don't know if that's backwards. Um, uh, I'd like to nominate Shawshank Oja. Seconded. Seconded. Um, I would like to respectfully decline. Side two, two, President Takamoto. Julie Takamoto, Side two, two, Prez. I would like to nominate Peter Matthews. Point of information. Kai Edwards, Go ahead, Kirsten. President, Kai. Student Affairs. Unfortunately, Peter is a proxy and not a voting member of council, so he cannot be nominated at this time. Darn. I appreciate the nomination. I would have respectfully declined anyway, as I am on internship right now. <laughs> For, <laughs> lots of names. President Bizzle? Christina Bizzle, President. I nominate Grace Moss. Uh, thank you for the nomination, uh, but I respectfully decline. Uh, <laughs> Vice President of Student Affairs, Ms. Kai Edwards. Kai Edwards, um, Vice President of Student Affairs. I nominate Lee Detterer. Point of information, Christina Bissell, President. Lee Detterer is a proxy for Julia the Apple Press, or Rep, I believe. Yes, Lee Dutterer, um, proxy for Julia, the president of the Apple Club. Um, I respectfully decline if you were asking, but yes, I'm a proxy. Any other nominees? 
Nope. Uh, Director of External Relations, Shimizu. Aiden Shimizu, Director of External Relations. I nominate Nick Merton. Seconded. You know what, sure. <laughs> My schedule is hating me right now, but sure. Nick Merton, uh, uh, side to two VP, I respectfully, or I graciously accept. Thanks, Nick. Okay. I do believe that's three candidates, although I will give people a minute if there's any last minute nominations. Yes, you can self-nominate if you if you would like to. I'm seeing um, Beastie Boys in the speaker's queue, I think we can now <laughs> move to the next step of the uh, election process. So basically how this is going to work is we have our three candidates. So we have um, Galsworthy, Kalina, and Vice President Saitu to Nick Merton. I will turn it over to you, uh, Aiden, and basically I'll have you have questions prepped, I'll have you ask them, or conversely, we can also turn it over to the rest of council if people have questions they want to ask, but if you already have like three, um, we can do it that way. For each of the candidates, I'll have a 20 second timer. Um, once Aiden asks you the question, I'll tell you what order you're going in. And then once 20 seconds goes, I will butt in and, and cut you off, basically. Um, I'll give you an indicator on the screen, though, or I may even just say five aloud when you have five seconds remaining. And yeah, once we've done uh, the question period, then we will send everyone from the room and council, uh, council will vote on who to vote, who to like, basically, or be a vote of confidence. Do I need to say my name and position every time I speak? Uh, I'll just, I'll go ahead and say you can, you can just ask the, the questions in this instance. Okay, okay. awesome. Okay, uh, and do, do I need three? Um, it's, 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 so, it's sort of up to you. Typically three is what's done, but... Um... No problem. Okay, um, my first question is, what is important about communicating with other engineering societies from other schools? Uh, and member Kalina, we'll start with you. Kalina McCloskey, first year faculty board rep and bed fund rep. I think what is important about communicating with other schools is just making sure we have a standard for everything to do with engineering, making sure we're not missing anything important or going too far with some things. Okay. Um, member Galsworthy, you'll go next. Same question. Um, Haley Galsworthy, VP of Psi25, um, and I think it's important to talk with other schools, um, like the engineering uh, faculties of other schools, especially during COVID, just because everything is always changing, um, and seeing what other schools can be really helpful to use as input uh, to make decisions on what we want to do as a faculty. Right, and then candidate Mervin. Thank you. Um, similar to what the other candidates said, just in principle, uh, it's good uh, to share information with other engineering societies to ensure um, that both, like to share practices, both that our engineering societies use to, to run our operations and serve our students, as well as to uh, compare notes on what our universities and faculties are doing to help hold them accountable. Nice. Awesome. Okay, my next question is, um, on this committee, you'll be need you'll need to help us make requests and recommendations to higher bodies. Uh, so whether that be provincial or uh, provincial or national. Um, so when we make recommendations, we need to make sure that we represent all Queen students. And how do you think that we should ensure that all Queen students voices are heard, and that we give a collective opinion? So 
we will start with candidate Merton this time. And just for the candidates, you don't have to state your name and position. Just feel free to, to go right into the kind of answer. So candidate Merton, whenever you're ready. You are on mute right now. Sorry, I thought I clicked that, thank you. Uh, in order to make sure that we're adequately reflecting like what the whole student body needs, um, I think, it, I mean, surveys are a very good tool and just in general uh, relying or leaning on um, many of the, uh, the representatives here are, who are representatives of specific sectors of our membership to make sure that we're really getting a wide range of viewpoints. And it counts really. Uh, yeah, similar to what the last candidate said, surveys are a very good tool, um, as well as just communicating with peers and asking any questions of our peers, like if we have something that we might not have experience with or not know a certain opinion about. Great. And then candidate McCloskey. I would agree with both other candidates. Surveys are an excellent way to have that anonymous vote, so there's no bias in any of the voting, um, and that way you get an equal sample of everyone's opinions. All right. Awesome. My last question is just an easy one. Why do you want to join X, the External Communications Committee, or XCOMCOM? Uh, we'll start with candidate Galsworthy this time. Um, I want to join XCOMCOM um, because I just want to continue to get involved within the community being new to Queens. I just want to meet new people and uh, get more exposure to different experiences and different committees. And then we'll go to candidate McCloskey. I would agree with candidate Galsworthy. Um, I'm not 100% sure what I'm signing up for, but uh, I would just love to get uh, an idea of all different committees, see what I like best. All right, and rounding us out, candidate Merton. Thank you. Um, I am not new to Queens. I'm almost out of here, so maybe I can be the under the end of that equation, passing some information and advice on. But uh, I would also just like to help um, use my last year, but it is my first year on council to sort of help make an impact for the better within Antisoc and uh, try to improve some of our activities and processes and all that. This is a part, a way of doing that. All right, good stuff. So now what we'll do is we'll have the candidates go into a breakout room or just the lobby, I guess. Once that is done, you can vote. Perfect. And so because because um, there's only the three three candidates, three positions, um, basically be a vote of confidence for each candidate. So you can vote each time. Unless this is the part where I find out one of the candidates is still in the room and <laughs> we have to ask all the questions again. <laughs> All right, point of information, Andrew Silva, Director of Governance, all the polls are ready. So whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, so we'll start with the vote of confidence for Haley. Haley Galsworthy as an XCOMCOM committee member. Perfect. Then we will do, uh, do you have confidence in Kalena McCloskey as an XCOMCOM committee member? Okay, that one passes too. And finally, do you have confidence in Nick Merton as an XCOMCOM committee member? OK. 
Okay, perfect. So all three of them uh, were successfully voted for. I think we can welcome that back in and give them the old NSHOC Council for a round of applause. So congratulations to all of the candidates. Uh, you will see your names being filled in on the screen right now in real time. Technology is amazing. And I guess I'll just ask, do we have a closing, Director Shimizu? Uh, Agent Shimizu, Director of External Relations. I'm excited to work with you all. And remember that uh, if you have any first year friends that would like to be a part of this committee, voting or non-voting, then tell them to come to the next council. Thanks everyone. Okay, perfect. So, whereas we need a committee to communicate externally, and whereas it's time to get this party started, be it resolved that council elect Kalena Mikhailovsky, Haley Galsworthy, and Nick Murden to XCOMCOM according to bylaw 9B, moved by Aiden Shimizu, seconded by Christina Bizzle. Bring the polls to the table. Motion passes. E doggy. Congratulations to all the candidates. Good stuff. All right, motion number four. Whereas the executives presented an equity, diversity, and inclusion accountability report, and whereas the 2021 2022 EDII action plan was part of the summer plan and there is always room to grow. Be it resolved that council approves the EDII, EDII action plan for the 2021-2022 academic year, moved by Christina, yay, a motion, fizzle, seconded by Kaya, yay, EDI. Hi, right, Nice Edwards. Christina Bissell, president, opening for motion. Uh, thank you for all for listening to our presentation. Um, basically what this motion um, does is allows us to go forward with implementing these initiatives and we will put it on the website and the executive will sign it. Thank you. If you have any questions, please let us know. If you think of something later, please email us. Okay. The motion is now on the floor for debate. Seeing no names in the speaker's queue, however. Okay. Seeing no names in the speaker's queue, do we have a closing? Kai Edwards, Vice President of Student Affairs. Um, yeah, please encourage uh, your classmates, your friends to check out the report. It'll be available by the end of this week on both the Instagram as well as the NSHDOC website. Um, if they or you have any questions or ideas for initiatives this year, please free, feel free to let us know. Our emails, uh, Christina has already sent, but they're president at ngsoc.queensu.ca and vpsa at ngsoc.queensu.ca. All that information is also available on the website. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for listening. All right, whereas the executives presented an equity, diversity, and inclusion accountability report, and whereas the 2021-2022 EDII action plan was part of the summer plan and there is always room to grow, be it resolved that council approve the EDII action plan for the 2021-2022 academic year, moved by Christina Bizzle, seconded by Kaya Edwards, the polls. Motion passes. All right. Moving on to motion number five. Whereas bursary committee needs members in order to run this year, and whereas the aforementioned members need to be elected, be it resolved that council elect blank, 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 and blank to the bursary committee as seen in policy section row A4, moved by Maya, should pay rent to staff, Ionamama. Seconded by Jeevan Washed Up Logs, current Dosi, 
Salvaraja, is there an opening? Yes, indeed. Um, howdy, Council. Jeevan Savaraja, Director of Social Issues. Um, unfortunately, my bursary chair could not make it tonight, um, so I will be running bursary committee elections. Um, that being said, I just wanted to give a quick rundown of the bursary committee. Um, so the committee manages bursaries submitted by members of the engineering community, um, community um, to provide financial accessibility to the engineering society. Um, in terms of time commitment, um, the time commitment for the committee is quite unique um, as it depends on the influx of bursaries that come through the general bursary form, which is available on the NSOC website. <laughs> um, that being said, some major operations that we do run over the year include jacket bursaries, side formal bursaries, um, bursaries for some smaller conferences, and then orientation week bursaries over the summer. Um, so yeah, uh, my bursary chair has um, a given me a list of um, individuals that have reached out and would like to get nominated tonight, so I will be nominating them. However, we are opening the floor to council members as well. Um, so if any council members would like to either self-nominate or nominate one another to join the bursary committee, we're very open to that. But uh, yeah, that being said, are we good to start the nominations? I think we're good. There's a lot of names in the queue. So people are, oh, is this limited to voting members of council? Human Self Roger, Director of Social Issues, no, it is uh, just open to any member of council. Okay, um, so I can go through the list that I've been provided. So um, I nominate Julia Takamoto to join the bursary committee. Seconded. Except thirded. Wonderful. Okay. Um, second person, I nominate Leticia New to join the bursary committee. Seconded. I accept. Wonderful. Um, third individual, I nominate Damien, Damien Chodnia to join the bursary committee. I accept. Seconded. Uh, wonderful. I think that's everyone that has attended council on my list. Um, so we can move on to um, speaker's queue, I guess. Okay, exciting. Um, First in the speaker here, it looks like Vice President Student Affairs, Anise Edwards. Uh, Kindness Edwards, Vice President Student Affairs. I nominate uh, Sab Sabrina Button. Seconded. Uh, Sabrina Button, side two five president. I respectfully decline. Next in the queue, we have the Sci 22 faculty board rep, Opler. Jonah. Point of information, I think he proxied his vote to Peter today. I don't think he's in attendance. True. His name is probably a relic. Disregard that. Okay, moving on. Sci 24 President Fakit. Ali Pakit, Sci 24 President. I nominate Jashank. Uh, I graciously accept. Do we have a seconder there? Sorry. Seconded. All right. Uh, side two two Prez Takamoto. Julia Takamoto, side two two Prez. Uh, I would like to nominate Ali Vicky, Noah Wyman, Komal J two, and Peter Matthews. <laughs> uh. Okay, I, I'm going to respectfully to decline. Uh, Ali Pete, Psycho for Prez, I uh, graciously accept. Thank you. Uh, Como J2 and I accept. Noah Peter. Wyman, Side 2 3 President, I also accept. Uh, Peter Matthews, uh, proxy for fourth year faculty board rep, I respectfully decline. <laughs> Junior Senator Oja. Uh, I think I've already accepted. Uh, oh, I noticed your name in the speaker's queue. I wasn't sure if you- Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was gonna nominate Ali. He's already nominated. <laughs> Just a reminder that anyone is also allowed to self-nominate if you would like to. But seeing no self-nominations and seeing 
no new names in the speakers queue. We have. Oh, sorry, is that President Takamoto? Do you have someone else? Yeah, to to Prez. Sorry, I might have put myself in the wrong list. Um, I missed somebody. Can I also nominate Jeremy uh, Nguyen? I don't remember how to say his last name. Sorry. Also, not sure if he's here right now. Looks like Senator Nguyen. Currently in attendance. I'm going to send him an angry text. That is, that is fair. And your prerogative. Um, oh, uh, Director of Social Issues, Savaraja. Stephen Savaraja, Director of Social Issues. I'm um, seeing that we do need some diversity from Side 25 as well. Um, I would like to nominate anyone from Side 25 that's here today. If I can do that, I don't know if I can. Seconded. Similar to before for side two five, if you want to accept, if you want to throw it in the chat. And if you have any questions about the Bursu committee or the time commitment, um, please feel free to ask them in the chat or unmute yourself and ask. I'm sure Jeevan would love to answer them and kind of explain a bit about what the committee does and what your role will be. Uh, I see Jim Savaraja, Director of Social Issues. I see a question in the chat. What is the time commitment? So the time commitment varies depending on the influx of bursaries that we get through the um, bursary form. Um, throughout the year, we have major operations that run, such as jacket bursaries, side form bursaries, and orientation week bursaries that do um, require longer meeting hours. But um, de depending on like the influx of stuff on the form, uh, meeting hours should not be too long, maybe three meetings a year ranging from an hour to two hours, which isn't too intensive on the time commitment, if that makes sense. I'm just going to throw a little point of information in there. Uh, last year, we met, I believe, twice uh, just for jacket anniversaries. Our first one took us probably an hour. The second one took us closer to three hours. Um, and majority of our meetings are under an hour, just like jackets and I think it's just jackets that are is a big, big one. Any other questions, acceptances, or respectful declines from side two five? Also noting the speaker skew doesn't look like there's anyone else in there. So we'll give it another five, 10 seconds, and then if there's nothing else, we will get into the question period. Okay, seeing no self nominations, no other names in the speakers queue and no other Psi 25s in the chat, um, we can get into the question period now. So. Um, Director Salaraja, if you had some preps, we can run it similar to how we did before. Or um, again, if you if you want, we can also have council ask questions too. And if we do go that route, I'll just get people to put their name in the speaker's queue. So whatever you'd like to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, I do have three questions prepared, so I can go through the three now. Um, so the first question um, is, why would you like to join the bursary committee? Okay. And we will start with candidate Takamoto. 20 seconds. Julie Takamoto, Sci2 Prez. Sorry, I'm going to talk fast. Um, I have been a, a part of Bursary Committee for the last two years, and I think I bring a lot of knowledge and experience to the table when it comes to uh, deciding who to give bursaries to and also, um, you know, taking into consideration all the different factors that can apply to a bursary and to a bursary application. Um, and I would really like to be able to also pass on some of my knowledge to the incoming students joining bursaries. Yes. <laughs> so candidate uh, new we'll go with you next yeah so i want to um, join bursary committee since i really want to help further along the mentioned and stock edii initiatives 
and help the bursary chair allow for all NSOC events to be financially accessible to anyone who may want to participate in them. Candidate Chodinya. Hi, so I'd love to join bursary committee because I would like to help make events as accessible as possible. I don't want someone to feel like they're left out just because, you know, they're a couple bucks short on something. Uh, it'd be a real shame to have some people miss out on some of these things if they really want to participate in. Canada Oja. Hey, so as engineering is really about inclusivity and making sure everyone belongs, and as an individual who heavily did like consider scholarships and bursaries for a lot of my decisions, um, I believe that I would like to help uh, provide as many resources to as many individuals as possible. And I would love to do that. <laughs> and uh, as engineering is really tradition heavy and uh, it's really an important part of the culture, I would like to make sure that the events and anything is really accessible to everyone involved to make sure that the bursaries are going to people who deserve them the most and to gain knowledge from the people, my uppers, who might have more information about that. Candidate Wyman. Uh, I'm sure all of us have noticed as engineering students at Queens that there are lots of financial obligations that we would not necessarily have considered um, when, you know, starting our education that we're either we want to participate in or we're required to um, and making sure that we can make our community as financially accessible as possible to as many people as possible, I think is very important. And candidate Budden. Uh, I would like to make sure that uh, things are accessible to everyone who wants to participate. And a lot of things have been missed for uh, every year due to COVID. And I think going forward, it's important to make sure that everyone that wants to participate can participate regardless of their wants. Okay. Nice. Thank you, candidates. Uh, Director Salvaraja, I believe that was all of the candidates, so I'll turn it over to you for the next question if you're ready. Wonderful. Thank you for your responses. So your second question is, how would you manage personal biases when deciding on applicant bursaries um, at committee meetings? I, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness. Candidate Jethi, I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's day two. Too. Sorry, it's a tricky last name. Um, I've been lucky enough to be on bursary committee for the last two years, and I've really enjoyed it. I'm hoping that experience can help other new members. And on top of that, I've had to rely on financial aid in the past, so I'm very aware of how important it is, and I want to make sure that I help. Um, I like give respect to all the applications. Thank you very much. So sorry about that. Great. At the risk of something similar happening, <laughs> Director Salaraja, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you. Um, thank you again for your responses. Um, so the second question I would like to ask is how would you manage personal biases when deciding on applicant bursaries at committee meetings? And we'll start with candidate button this time. Um, I think having a systematic way of deciding who receives a bursary is a really good idea. So having like a set list of parameters that you would compare each applicant to um, in order to fairly decide who should be receiving a bursary and not receiving a bursary is really important when considering bias. Perfect. Candidate J2. Um, I personally, uh, after being on bursary for the last two years, I've tried to actually become aware of my own personal biases and work on them. And also I've tried to actually write them down so I'm aware of that, as well as focusing on the fact that it's a great responsibility and my own opinion shouldn't affect someone's eligibility. Candidate Wyman. Um, I completely agree with candidate Button that um, preparing ahead of time, making sure to be personally aware of my own biases and to um, write things down to make a list to help myself um, be a little bit more objective um, in my decision making process, I think would be helpful in uh, avoiding that bias. 
Can it be key? Uh, as a team at the beginning of the year to write down what we find to be criteria that we're going to judge upon if somebody were to receive a bursary, and then have it be blind where no name or pronouns would be there in order to make sure that it is as fair as possible and no personal bias would affect in any way, shape or form. Thank you. Canada Oja. Uh, as it's important to realize, everyone will always have a personal preference. And in order to Eliminate that, I would propose having a rubric like candidate button suggested where um, it's very merit and financial aid based so that it subjectively provides the financial aid to who needs it most, so. Candidate Chidinia. Uh, I personally am just good at detaching myself from my biases and I would just look at, uh, you know, the demonstrated financial need and base it off of that completely. Whoever's able to, uh, if we're on the limited funding, for example, whoever shows that they need it the most, if there's clear financial need, that's where the money would go. Can it you? Um, I think it's really hard to remove ourselves from personal bias, especially sometimes when we don't even know that we have a bias. But I think using or like trying our best to use an objective lens and looking at each application and just making things as accessible and inclusive as possible. And can it talk about? Uh, to me, it's all about knowing your own personal biases. We can't separate ourselves from our subconscious biases, and everybody has them. So it's just about knowing where you are biased. Um, and making sure you recuse yourself when necessary. If you believe your biases are getting in the way, you just take yourself out of the situation. That's why we have as many members as we do on bursary. Thanks, candidates. Director Salvaraja, that was all the candidates for. Oh. Uh, yep, thank you all for your responses. Um, so the final question is, uh, why is EDIIAS? So that is equity, diversity, inclusivity, indi indigenization, accessibility, and sustainability important to you? Uh, and we will start with candidate Akit this time. Uh, why is it important to me? Be, if I can, can the question be repeated again? I'm sorry. Never forget. Yep, for sure. Um, why is EDIIAS, which stands for Equity, Diversity, Inclusivity, Indigenization, Accessibility, and Sustainability, important to you? Uh, it's important to me because. Uh, okay. It's important that everybody, despite where they came from or what's going on in their respective background, have the same opportunities, the same uh, rights as anybody else and not be affected in any way because of that, where they came from or any history. Candidate Wyman, we'll go to you next. Absolutely. So as someone, um, I have myself experienced situations where I felt very out of place. I felt like a minority in a situation and have been. Um, and it can really be damaging to your own like self-worth and your belief in yourself and your ability to accomplish and be as good as everyone else. Um, I think making sure that we have the right representation to make everyone feel like they belong is the best way to make sure everyone succeeds as best as they are physically capable of. You candidate Wyman, uh, candidate Oja. Uh, as a newcomer to Canada, I've uh, experienced my own set of adversities that I've had to overcome. And I understand that not everyone starts at the same like area, like the same line in the race. Everyone like is closer to the finish line than each other. And I would, if I would have the, the honor to uh, be able to help individuals who are less fortunate get the opportunities that everyone else at Queens has. Thank you, candidate Oja. Uh, candidate Chodinia. Uh, so it's important to me because uh, we're all engineers here. We're all giving uh, all, a lot of ourselves to, to make the world a better place, to contribute to the world. And I, uh, I think it really doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, if you're willing to do that. You know, our community has to look out for each other because if we don't, who else? That's the way I look at it. Thank you, candidate Chodinia. Candidate J2. As a woman of color and also an immigrant, I've experienced both microaggressions and just un, like 
unconscious biases. So it's something that I personally have had to deal with and adapt to. So I'm very aware that everyone's circumstances are different and everyone has a lot to contend with. And I personally believe that that shouldn't affect your, how you're treated. And I really want to make sure that everything is as equitable and fair as possible, regardless you, of who you are. Thank you, candidate J2. Uh, candidate Nyu. Um, I think it's really important to create a welcoming environment for everyone at Queen's, especially considering it's historically dominated by white males. Um, and I think it's just really important to create change that is actually beneficial and work together and he have a variety of voices. Thank you, candidate Nyu. Candidate Takamoto. Thanks. Uh, EDI is very important to me just because I recognize that everybody has their own set of circumstances. I would say there isn't a student at Queens who hasn't personally experienced some kind of issue that EDII can address. Um, and I think it's really important just to tie that back to the, the whole bursary situation is to consider all the bursary applications through the lens of EDII um, and to make sure we give all the applicants an equal standing regardless of uh, unconscious bias. Thank you, Kenneth Takamoto and candidate Button. Um, as someone who has faced adversity because of my identity and my background, I understand that things always work better when everyone is included and roadblocks are taken out of the way for everyone. So I think in order to have the best possible system at Queen's Engineering, um, we need to consider um, equity and diversity in um, bursary applications. Awesome. All right. Big thanks to all the candidates. I think those were the three questions, if I'm not mistaken, Director Salvaraja. Yep, those were the three questions asked. Okay. So as with the last time, we will we will send the candidates to a lobby or a breakout room. music. Just with a little Jeopardy noise in there. Yeah, it's going through my head. And it's focus. Julia, you read my mind. I was thinking the same thing. Is that all the candidates, Director DeSilva? Uh, Director of Governance, Andrew Silva, yes. And the way we will do this voting, since it is contested, I will Everyone will get four. Uh, I'll have it as Yep. Um, as per policy, row of subsection A4, subsection, sub subsection um, nine, we are required just to elect more than three people. So if all eight people get elected tonight, that is, um, that conforms with policy. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. That policy. Wow. Bear with me here. I'm going to have to make some new polls. That was an impressive policy citation. Had that unlocked. <laughs> Were you waiting, Jeevan? <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe send a note to the uh, the breakout room just so they're not panicking. Everyone in waiting room, I can send a message there.
Can you're if you're pretty close there, Andrew. I could maybe start, or I guess you have to make the polls go live, though. Eh? Yeah, I am almost done. Sorry, okay. everyone. And Um, start. Could you, if you could, follow the order of the speakers within the speakers queue? That'd be awesome. For them. Yeah, of course. There's one thing I excel at. All right. Um, so going in that order, then, do you have confidence in Julia Takamoto as a bursary committee member? Poll is live. And passes, perfect. All right, moving along in that order. Do you have confidence in Leticia New as a bursary committee member? Pull is live. And it passes. Mm -hmm. Do you have confidence in Damien Chadinia as a bursary committee member? Uh, this one passes. All right. Do you have confidence in Shawshank Oja as a bursary committee member? This one passes. Do you have confidence in Ali Bakit as a bursary committee member? This one also passes. Do you have confidence in Noah Wyman as a bursary committee member? This one passes. Do you have confidence in Kamal J2 as a bursary committee member? This one passes. And last but not least, do you have confidence in Sabrina Button as a bursary committee member? Uh, point of information, Kai Edwards, Vice President of Student Affairs. Uh, to answer your question, Sama, um, we can vote for everyone because Jeevan mentioned that according to policy, we can take just more than three. Um, so if, if you have confidence in all of the individuals, uh, you can vote for everyone. And this last one also passes. Okay, that was all of the candidates. Um, I can make them 
Oh, that's the map. So congratulations to all the candidates. According to policy, we only have to elect three minimum, but um, council had confidence in all of you and a full bursary committee is a happy bursary committee. So huge congratulations. And I will now turn it over to Director Salvaraja if there is a closing. Yeah, June Salvaraja, Director of Social Issues. Um, thank you all for um, nominating and being elected onto the committee. I look forward to working with all of you to promote financial accessibility across our society. Um, my bursary chair will be sending an email um, soon to schedule our first meeting. Looking forward to it. Okay. With the closing out of the way, there we go. Whereas bursary committee needs members in order to run this year, and whereas the aforementioned members need to be elected, be it resolved that council elect Julia Takamoto, Latessia New, Damian Chidinia, Shawshank Oja, Ali Bakit, Noah Wyman, Kamal Jaitu, and Sabrina Budden to the bursary committee as seen in policy section row A4, moved by Maya Ionomana, Mana, seconded by Jeevan Salvaraja. We can now, we may now vote on the motion. And motion passes. Nice. All right, congratulations once again. And moving on to motion number six, whereas the Reelectric Design Club is newly ratified, and whereas the changes should be ref the change should be reflected in bylaw, be it resolved that council approves the changes to bylaw 10H.2 as seen in its first reading in appendix appendix reelectric bylaw, moved by Jen Vroom Squared Kravinich, seconded by Kaya Vroom Squared <laughs> Edwards. Do we have an opening from either of the movers? Yes. Um, Kaya Niska Edwards, Vice President, Student Affairs. Um, this one was a little bit of an oops. Um, I forgot, I motioned to change policy. I forgot to motion to change bylaw. Um, so this is just reflecting the changes that we made to policy and officially recognizing the fact that we did re ratify re-electric. Right. Uh, motion is now open for debate. And as this is a, a reading of bylaw, I guess I'll just remind everyone that bylaw gets read twice at council. So this motion will return to the next council. Seeing no names in the speaker's queue. Do we have a closing from either of the movers? <laughs> We'll see you guys again two weeks from now for the uh, next reading. All right. With that being said, whereas the Reelectric Design Club is newly ratified, and whereas this change should be reflected in bylaw, be it resolved that council approves the changes to bylaw 10H.2 as seen in its first reading in Appendix, Appendix Reelectric Bylaw, moved by Jen Kovinich, seconded by Kaya Edwards. You may now vote. Vroom cubed, motion passes. All right, see you in two weeks. <laughs> motion seven, <laughs> whereas the Endards Club is newly ratified and whereas the change should be reflected in bylaw, be it resolved that council approved the second reading of the ratification of NJARTS as an engineering society club as per their constitution, seen in appendix NJARTS and bylaw change, moved by Jillian, writer's block one, seconded by Adam, creative block fell. Do we have an opening from either of the movers? Yeah, so a Jillian one member at large, this is um, just to reflect the um, uh, ratification that happened at uh, the last council. <laughs> All right. Motion is open for debate. I'll give people a minute to throw their name into the speaker's queue if they have any discussion, debate, questions. 
Seeing none. Yeah, seeing none. Do we have a closing from either of the movers? Um, just that we're excited to get started, so stay tuned. Okay, perfect. So, whereas the Endurance Club is newly ratified, and whereas the change should be reflected in bylaw, be it resolved that council approved the second reading of the ratification of Endurance as an engineering society club as per their constitution, seen in appendix Endurance and bylaw change, moved by Jillian Wood, seconded by Adam Fell. You may now vote. Motion passes. And moving along, motion number eight. Whereas the Engineering Society has an operational budget for the 2021 2022 operating year, and whereas we need to approve it, be it resolved that Council approve the operational budget for the Engineering Society as seen in Appendix Operational Budget for the upcoming 2021 2022 year, moved by Michael, time is money, Butler. Seconded by Ben, and I'm broke, Frost. Do we have an opening from either of the movers? Uh, Mike Butler, Director of Finance, no opening. All right. We will then put the motion on the floor for debate. Give people another five seconds if they want to put their name in the queue. Seeing no names in the speaker's queue, do we have a closing? <laughs> Michael Butler, Director of Finance, no closing. Consistency, love it. All right, well, on that note, I have just minimized my Zoom screen, that's good. Whereas the Engineering Society has an operational, operational budget for the 2021-2022 operating year, and whereas we need to approve it, be it resolved that council approve the operational budget for the Engineering Society as seen in appendix operational budget for the upcoming 2021-2022 year, moved by Michael Butler, seconded by Ben Frost. Voting should be open. Oh, time is money indeed. Motion passes. Stellar. All right. And that brings us to the end of new business. We can now get into the next part of the agenda, which is the executive reports, starting with the president's report from President Bizzle. Christina Bissell, president. Uh, yeah, so over these past few weeks, been working a lot with the executive on helping them out with reopening, specifically with Clark and CEO for jacket fitting. I attended the AMS assembly and the fall term break time. Action plan, which took, oh, sorry. My headphones cut out, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, awesome. Um, yes, a lot of EDI action plans, so that took the bulk. A majority of my time this week and over the next few weeks I will continue with these things. We hired an orientation chair, Alex Plastovic, sorry I messed up her name, and we'll be hiring Chief Freck and the rest of FC when we come back from reading break. Thank you. Thank you, President Fiscal. Moving on to <laughs> wake me up inside. Moving on to Vice President of Operations Frost. Hi, everybody. Um, so, yeah, I've been doing a lot of stuff last week. Um, I've kind of made nicknames for them because they're so common. Um, I have the usual, which is all the payment stuff that I always do, and then the classics, which is all my meetings that I have. Um, lots of service reopening stuff. Obviously, I was at Clark's ritual for the entirety of Friday, um, and I was at CEO's jacket fitting for almost all of Saturday. I've um, been dropping by the team every once in a while to just help with problems. Um, along with that, alarms, keys, and space access. Um, been helping, I've well, been giving people keys and stuff. Um, also been helping Michael with the budget and finalizing that. Wrapped up business manager training so they all know what they're doing. Um, and wrapped up payroll registration for staff. 
um, next week, going to be continuing our service reopening um, and helping Michael with BOE for affiliated groups, uh, continuing to do IT stuff with the Office 365 migration, um, wrapping up some month ends, science plus manager hiring, uh, payroll, e transfers, credit card purchases, um, and all my normal meetings. And then probably going to start working on some policy changes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's all. Got made fun of in golden words, if you saw that. <laughs> Thank you, Boonjamin Cold. Moving on to Vice President of Student Affairs, Niska Edwards. Uh, Kai Niska Edwards, Vice President of Student Affairs. Um, lots of weekly duties, including meetings, um, helped Christina with the EDII accountability report, uh, submitted my budget, which is part of the presentation that we saw today. Um, other exciting things um, and stuff that might be, that's gonna be coming to council next week. Uh, two teams will be vacating a space in one of the rooms. Um, so Jen and I are working on a plan to free up that space to be an opportunity for design teams who don't yet have space um, to hopefully be able to use that and be able to get into the design base. So that's all very exciting. Um, other than that, I'll be continuing to improve on breezy things. So if anyone has any feedback and has used the platform, please let me know. Um, there's always ways I can improve that guide. Uh, so be prepared for some policy changes at the council after the break. And uh, I will be holding some roundtables soon. So that's very exciting. Um, and that is all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President of Student Affairs, Nisa Edwards. Oh, and shout out to Andrew for getting my meme, <laughs> for amending to put my meme in here. Okay. Right. Director reports. We got director reports. Uh, director of Academics, Hadley. I'm not sure if there's any updates. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I fully did not submit my thing on time, but. Uh, Alexa Hadley, Director of Academics. Um, basically, things have been running really smoothly. I'm actually at the ILC right now because there's a Douglas Help Desk running, which is really exciting because that has not happened since, uh, well, two years ago. Um, so that's what's new for Engelinks. Also, they are um, been running a lot more of their workshops, trying to figure out timing for finals um, and making sure that they have a tutor for every um, course that they're running. And then icons, there are some changes that have been happening. So the first floor rooms are now open, which is really exciting. Also, you're allowed to quickly eat um, and then put your mask back on now, which is really nice, especially with the tea room. Um, tomorrow, actually, we have an academic caucus, which is also really exciting because last year there was no um, academic caucus. Um, so there hasn't been any of those in two years. So that should be really exciting. And then in the coming weeks, just working with Bed Fund. Um, making sure that idea generation events are getting scheduled and planned. Also continuing to help with the Engelinks workshops and just making sure that the icons follow all their protocol. And then also um, I met with my upper and my also academic feedback officer to start getting the academic feed feedback network up and running, um, hopefully within the next week or two. That's all from me. Thank you, Director Hadley. Moving to the Director of Communications, Director McGurk. Hi, everyone. Uh, Ellen McGurk, Director of Communications. Um, so the past two weeks, um, a lot of it's been usual tasks. So fill it, fulfilling graphic requests, maintaining Instagram, all in Gmails, and just static meetings uh, when necessary. Um, I hired my team, which is really, really exciting. Um, we've definitely been needing them, and most of them are on graphics. So that's going to be great while hiring season continues. Um, I actually met with everybody today. So today was the kickoff meeting. Um, and we've started planning in-house projects. Um, and managers have been really, really busy. Um, Sarah has been doing all kinds of headshots for multiple different clubs and teams. Uh, and she also got uh, coverage at Clark last Friday, um, which was really fun. Um, and things that are happening in the next two weeks. Um, so I've been planning a bit uh, for my FIPCO. I'll be doing more of that. Um, I'm hoping to have some more bonding activities with my team uh, as well as in doing some team training. Um, and for in-house projects, we're gonna be doing some campaigns that focus on uh, 
breast cancer awareness this month um, and hopefully some Halloween content as well, but we'll see about that. Um, and then of course my usual tasks um, and meeting with the faculty, uh, potentially Matthew Shepard, um, but that's pretty much it. Um, and I also included a picture of my dog. Thank you, Director McGurk. That dog is a model. Um, up next, Director of Clubs and Conferences, Director Fell. Hi, I'm Adam, Director of Clubs and Conferences. Um, so a lot of my time has been spent uh, meeting and communicating regularly with uh, conference co-chairs and club heads, which I've been doing. Um, I've also been assisting them with their planning and helping them wrap up fall hiring. Uh, as well, me and Jeevan have been hiring for the EDII conference and should have co-chairs um, hired by the start or middle of this week. Um, I've also had lots of interest uh, for ratification of new clubs, so I've been helping groups go through that process. Uh, over the next few weeks, I'll start working on the new EDII, EDII conference co-chairs uh, to help them set up uh, their team and begin the planning for that. Um, also, I'll be doing regular work with conference co-chairs and club heads, including making sure they all apply for the Dean's donation, which is due this Friday. Thank you. Thank you, Director Fell. Up next, Director of Design, Director Kovinich. Uh, Jen Kovinich, Director of Design. So uh, things I've been doing over the past two weeks, the Design Bay opened uh, last Monday, which was really exciting. So I've been working uh, a lot on that and uh, just putting up signs throughout there and making sure that it gets cleaned, uh, reviewing ratification forms, collecting uh, and reviewing stewardship agreements and safety plans. Um, so we're still hiring a captain for the Queen's fuel cell team. If anyone is interested, the applications got extended. Um, so they're still up on Breezy. Look out for that. Um, helping QMAS and QBMET transition their new captains as well as helping QBMET um, hire their co-chair, or not co-chair, sorry, co-captain. Um, oh, and I hosted the first design team roundtable uh, this Saturday, which went really well. Um, yeah, and things I'll be doing over the next two weeks, uh, hopefully hiring a captain, uh, reviewing more safety plans. Uh, design teams are still hiring general members, so definitely look out for that and just cleaning up and organizing the design bay. Thank you, Director Kovinich. Let the potato rest for five minutes. Up next, Director of Internal Processes, Director Ray. Evan Ray, Director of Internal Processes. Um, so a lot of my time in the last two weeks has just been preparing product projects from automation and process development team, um, as well as poster sale planning. Um, and then the next two weeks, it'll be a lot of poster sale planning, Dean's reception planning, and then preliminary planning for the Anschluck Awards Banquet. Thank you, Director Ray, for explaining wormholes and what you've been doing. Up next, Director of External Relations, Director Shimizu. Hi everyone, Aiden Jim is the Director of External Relations. Um, I wasn't here last time, so like generally over the summer, I just uh, went to a bunch of conferences for ESCO and CFES, and uh, I met with, I got some external contacts from other faculties that are listed there, Comstock, CISA, NFS, Fex, Fixa, KIN, and ACES. Um, in the last two weeks, uh, we ran Terry Fox Run, which raised about $3,000, so that's good. Uh, we delivered the uh, BLM patches that were sold over the summer. Um, we are hiring outreach team members and we're hiring November committee members and we're planning the events, uh, meeting with fix and clean coordinators to discuss the plan for the October event, see if it happens or not, and uh, planning and executing blood drive appointments. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be continuing to work with all those people, um, working on finish, or finalizing uh, XCOMCOM at the next council and hopefully starting to work with them soon. Um, I'll be reviewing minutes from ESCO teleconferences that I missed. Uh, I go to the next ESCO teleconference, which will be in October, the next couple of weeks. Um, I'll be interviewing PEOSC delegates, which is an ESCO conference, to assess how they liked the conference and if they thought it was useful. And I'll be sending out swab drive information soon to everyone. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Director Shimizu, and thank you for the rooster approval. Up next, Director of Finance, Director Butler. Hi, uh, Mike Butler, Director of Finance. Over these past two weeks, I've been finally obviously getting that operational budget. So that's a huge relief to have it approved. Uh, I've been kind of juggling both that and the affiliated groups. So I'm really glad to have one of them finally put to rest. And now I can really give the affiliated groups the attention that they deserve, uh, which they definitely have not been getting. So working on that, uh, I'm having to set up like a way better line of communication around that and getting Bank of Angels up and running. 
So that's my plan for the next little bit as well. Thank you very much, Director Butler. Lots of the different stages of nihilism. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, up next, Director of First Year, Director Liu. Hello, Council. Um, Alan Liu, Director of First Year. So uh, what I've been doing since uh, the last two weeks, I've been finishing up the year executive elections. Psi 25, their year exec is here tonight. Uh, we're just uh, finishing up a few positions, uh, electing the year uh, section reps and a few other positions as webmaster and scribe. Um, we ran an academic SAS workshop for the first years last week. Uh, we're currently setting up and conducting year crest voting and also uh, FIPCO. Um, things I'll be doing in the next two weeks, we'll be interviewing and assigning FIPCOs and possibly uh, holding some sort of welcome ceremony for them. We'll be also running jacket council uh, over the reading break and also looking to do perhaps a trivia or fun games night over the reading break as well. Thank you very much, Director Liu. And we love, I think that was British, Great British Bake Off, wonderful. Uh, up next, Director of Human Resources, Director Wong. Um, Kaya Edwards. Um, student Vice President Student Affairs. Allison has been having some connectivity issues, so I imagine that's the res this is the result. Uh, most of what Allison's been doing is breezy approvals and support, helping people get started with the platform. Uh, she is the main point of contact for hiring questions as well. Uh, she's also been working, she came to the design team roundtable to help out and answer questions from teams, as well as attending the HR, I believe it was an HR round table and it included other faculty societies as well as the AMS. Um, so that's pretty exciting. And she's hoping to get started on her new project soon. Um, and I hope you guys follow her on Instagram because she, she takes a lot of very cool photos. As you can see here, it's a baby duck. That is a wonderful baby duck. Thank you, Director Wong and Director Niska Edwards for the update. On to the Director of Governance, Director De Silva. Hello, Council. Andrew Silva, Director of Governance. So what I've done for the past two weeks, uh, I've been helping out with the first year elections um, with Kaya and Alan, um, helped out jacket fitting. I've been doing my stack meetings with Kaya. And then I set up the key council dates and updated the website as well, made some a few different changes, such as the asterisk uh, method for this council. And what I'll be doing next two weeks is help with jacket council, and help with first year section reps. Um, we'll do that tomorrow and we did some today. And then meeting with the election team to set up key dates, which we have done on Sunday and we're going to meet up again. Thank you very much, Director De Silva. I'll tell you more about governance anytime. Uh, next, Director of IT, Director Donovan. Hello, uh, Zach Donovan, Director of IT. Uh, what I've been working on in the last little while, um, I've got an AMS migration that's been taking place, eat up most of my time, but that's well underway. Hopefully we're done that by the, uh, the winter break or the winter, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we've been working with FC to kind of get the Go Nuts fundraiser off the ground. So building a website for them and a voting system, um, kind of setting up that stuff that's ready to go. Uh, we're hiring SDEV team members, um, our junior SDEV team members. So those are positions kind of specifically for first years to kind of get them involved within the software side of things on the, uh, at least on my team. Um, what's going on in the next few weeks? Um, we're setting up websites for the newly ratified um, teams and clubs, as well as getting Side25's website up and going. Um, and we've got some policy, kind of doing an IT policy uh, overhaul, if you will. It's very outdated, so we're going to get that done. That's it for me. Thank you, Director Donovan. Up next, Director of Social Issues, Director Salvaraja. Howdy, Council. Um, so over the last few weeks, I've had quite a few meetings with different people, ED, um, executives, equity team, sustainability, sustainability committee, et cetera. Uh, et cetera. 
Um, uh, we launched the Orientation Week EDII um, Accessibility Sustainability Survey last week. Um, FC has been advertising that, and the survey should close October the 9th. Um, so Sci25 year execs, um, please help spread the message to Sci25. Um, we will be using information from the survey to further improve Orientation Week for years to come. Um, I assisted in EDII action plan completion. Um, I did hiring for the EDII conference co-chairs and sustainability representatives. That's still ongoing and should hopefully be finalized sometime this week. Um, I received confirmation from facil facilities and Simon Smith on the um, baskets in the women's washrooms in the ILC. Um, so those will be returned. And then we're looking into placing um, baskets in the men's washrooms and then also Mitchell as well. Um, I discussed collaboration initiatives with the Director of External Relations on EI stickers slash patches, and that's something we'll be looking into this week as well. Um, we started December 6 memorial planning with my December 6 coordinator. Um, I transitioned documents and we're setting up meetings with Jay and Dean Deluzio um, to discuss it further. Um, we ran the Jack Adversary Committee last week. Um, I also helped with jacket fitting, which is super fun. Um, I elected um, the new 2021-2022 Adversary Committee to this council, which is super exciting. Um, and then I did mention this last council, but I did have my celebratory sushi, which was super fun for me. Um, but yeah, over the next two weeks, a lot more meetings, um, meetings with my bursary chair to reassess bursary policy um, and just work towards um, improving it, making it more effective and efficient. Um, we'll be transitioning the bursary committee um, sometime this week or next week after the reading week. Um, we'll be meeting with the EDI conference co-chairs to discuss conference planning, um, assessing the EDI survey for orientation week um, when that closes. Um, we'll be starting our training revamp fall initiative with the equity team sometime this week or after the reading week. Um, and then also looking into the menstrual products initiative, in introducing some more baskets in the men's washrooms and then introducing more baskets in Mitchell. Um, and then overall just helping where I can because I love my job. Thank you. Thank you, Director Salvaraja and Dog. <laughs> Uh, up next, we have Director of Professional Development, Director Matthews. Director Matthews is currently present. Looks like Director Matthews isn't currently present, but um, unless the executive have an update they'd like to give on her behalf. Looks like it is in the report. Yes, Christina Bissell, President. Um, Marissa is at a PD event tonight. Things are going really well. They had a really successful um, graduate studies workshop the other week. They're gonna be continuing doing workshops as well as um, if you guys need a resume review, please email it to them. And more information is in the PD Connects as well as the report. Okay, thank you to Director Matthews and thank you, President Bissell. Uh, for this next director report, it is um, the Director of Services, <laughs> Director Vo's report. I, however, have been asked to assist with this one. Um, so this is gonna be a little unconventional. Um, <clears throat> greetings, loved ones. Let's take a journey. Ready? <laughs> I, I know, know a place, place where, where the flex is really greener. Mm -hmm. Warm, <laughs> wet and wild. There, there must be a tea bag in the water. Mm -hmm. Sipping beer and ice, laying on the Clark patio. Dun dun. The fans <laughs> email us, trying to sneak a little article with us. You could travel the world, but nothing comes close to our golden words. Once you podcast with us. You'll be falling in love. Oh, 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 oh. Jacket pickup time. It's unforgettable. GPA's bursaries on top. Science quest so hot. Please come and work for us. Oh, 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 oh. All right, perfect. Now that I've ruined all my credibility. I was, yeah, I was going to get Nick to sing the whole thing, but I felt bad. So I was like, you know what? I have two more years to recover my reputation, so here we are. <laughs> um, 
yeah, that's basically all of my updates for the past two weeks. It's been very exciting. Um, coming up, as you can see, there's the HOCO sale. We're hiring head director soon. So somebody please apply. Um, doing a bunch of meetings as per usual. And I've been assembling care packages for all my managers. That's been super cool. Thank you, Director Vo. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you bring a motion to council, President Takamoto, I will strongly consider it. <laughs> So that brings us to the end of the director reports and into the question period. Um, and I am checking the speaker's queue and I do not see any questions. <laughs> oh, actually I do not. All right, seeing none um, and in an effort to move the attention away from me. Uh, maybe we can go into the faculty board report. Actually, we will go into the faculty board report. I don't know what this whole maybe thing was. <laughs> Christina Bissell, president, faculty board attendee. We have not met since the last faculty board. We will meet soon. Cheers. Cheers, President Bissell. Um, next, we will move into the Alma Matter Society report then. Uh, Salma Ibrahim, Psi 22 AMS representative. Um, it was a pretty good assembly. It was the first assembly of September 21st, so it wasn't too many things. Um, just a few reports from the executive and from the directors and stuff like that. Um, and we ratified um, a few uh, people for some committees, like judicial committee, judicial affairs deputy, election deputies, rector ballots, stuff like that, and approved some motions from the summer. Um, and there were goal plans and budgets for all the like commissions and stuff. Um, all the budgets were at net zero. So that's cool. We'll see how that works out. Um, and that's it. There was a discussion on something called policy papers, um, which is like a new idea that they're trying to introduce, which is like a way of essentially just documenting um, how they introduce new policies to um, the policies. So that was pretty cool. Uh, that was it for AMS. And the next one's going to be on October 21st. Uh, next up, we'll go to the Senate report. Here is one. Seeing no current Senate reports, we will move along to the engine. Oh, President Bissell, you may be muted, but I did see lips moving. I don't know. Sorry, that was just me talking to my housemate. If seeing no Senate report, we will move along to the Engineering Review Board report. Christina Bissell, President, ERB Overseer. Um, the ERB will be going through hiring to hire the new members within the next couple of months. Um, it's still a process. There's no report report. Perfect. Thank you, President Bissell. And then moving on to the advisory board report. Uh, Michael Butler, Deputy Chair of the advisory board. Uh, next meeting, so far there hasn't been much happening for the board lately. Next meeting is planned for week six. Uh, that's going to be orientation week and science first year end presentations. And the upcoming project is similar to what Jima was discussing, EDII for orientation week. <laughs> Thank you, Director Butler. So now we are going to move into the club reports, but I will just take a brief minute to kind of let some of the council newcomers or even honestly people like me who need a refresher uh, know how this works. So uh, when we go into the reports, we will say apply, applied math or the apologies, whoever is here on behalf of Apple Math or everyone's here on behalf of Apple Math will say, President Bissell, <laughs> how does it work again? 
will say apple math and then everyone else will say nerds. nerds that's the one and we will go so on and so forth so chem eng chem all the chem eng chems will say chem eng chem everyone will respond with fumes geological everyone will respond with dirt and civil everyone will respond with themes don't worry i will remind you before we go into those there will be something for year reports as well we'll cross that bridge when we get to it apple, uh, apple. Nerds. 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 I go? okay um hi lee Dediver. i am the apple club rep and i'm proxying for julia today so what we've been doing, I guess, since the last update is elections for year and sub-discipline reps, as well as a sci formal rep. Those are being held right now. As well, we're getting feedback on third year courses to address some concerns with course delivery. And we just got a reply from the undergrad head. So we will be proceeding with meetings for sorting out issues within courses. And finally, we're working with the corporate relations team to set up PD workshops for Apple um, to understand how to market our very odd degree and show people how to actually use that and um, doing that before the career fair. And then we are looking at adding an internal tutoring tool on our Apple website so that we can find grad school tutors for some of the upper level Apple math courses. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Proxy Daterer. Uh, up next, the Chem Eng Chem report, after which we will all say fumes. Chem and Chem. Fumes. Hi, my name is Kennedy Nickenbauer. I'm the EngSoc rep for the Chem and Chem Club. Uh, a few things we've been working on are looking into a couple of virtual events we can host for incoming students and current Chem and Chem students. Uh, just finalizing a couple of things with our budget and we have elected second year reps. All right, awesome. Up next is the geological engineering report, after which we will say dirt. Geological. Dirt. 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 Uh, Marie Helen Lapointe, geological engineering representative. So what we've been doing, um, we finished up hiring for year reps and some subcommittees to get the year rolling. Um, we're looking into wilderness first aid courses and some professional development stuff uh, that's geospecific to help out with, um, like, you know, professional development things. Um, we had a trivia night to replace back to school barbecue and considering it was virtual and on Zoom, we had a pretty good turnout. So we're excited for um, some different events that we can put on as the year goes on. Um, but that being said, we are having a hard time uh, across the board with participation because everything is still virtual. So we are praying and hoping that we will be able to do a Christmas dinner if um, restrictions ease up in the next couple months. And yeah. That's about it. Thank you, Gio. And our last report will be from Civil, after which we will say beams. 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 Is there anyone present who can speak on behalf of civil talk? I am not on civil society, but I am in civil engineering, and I know that we are having our welcome back barbecue on Wednesday. Sorry, Kat Edwards, uh, Vice President of Student Affairs. An in-person welcome back barbecue? Good question. Um, I don't really know what all the details are, but I know that it is a very limited capacity and you have to buy tickets and faculty are involved. This is all I know. I am not on civil society. Okay, cool. I will follow up with them directly then. 
Okay. Moving on to your reports then. Um, so this one also has a, a little bit of a something something going on. So each year will be introduced. Um, everyone who is basically younger than that year can call them old. Um, and any year that is younger than the other years can be called fresh. So for example, when Psi23 gives their report, uh, Psi22 or Psi21, if you're really archaic, can say fresh. When Psi22 gives the report, um, maybe other than the, yeah, only Psi22 is, is called old basically. Um, even, yes, Psi22 can be called old, everyone else is called fresh. And yeah, by those older than them. Okay. Perfect. So without further ado, we will go into the year report from Psi chugga 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 two two. Psi two two. Crush. Thanks, Christina. <laughs> More call us old though. Because yeah. I'm the same age as silly. Old. Silly Frosh <laughs> forgot how to call us old. All right. Uh, Julie Takamoto, Psy22 Prez. Um, our big thing right now is that we are electing our yearbook, year merch, and webmaster reps. Please, 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 if you know anybody in Psy22, encourage them to apply. The nominations are out. They went out in the last uh, all end. Um, nominations will be closing on Wednesday. Voting will happen this Thursday, Friday, as long as we have enough people nominated. Um, but if you have any interest at all in either being a part of Psy22 exec or helping create the yearbook, because this is gonna be our yearbook, um, please apply for the positions. Um, we are also working on getting our leftover merch into the NSOC store, the little store tab on the NSOC website. Um, we are looking to put out our Psy22 masks and some stickers. Keep an eye out for those. I think we still have some ones that say things like Big Pole Energy. They're very fun. Um, and go check out our Insta at QueensEng22. Um, and that's all I've got. Thanks, Council. Thank you, Psy22. Moving well along then, we will go to Psy. Nobody likes you when you're 23. Psy23. Frosh. Thank you. Um, no, I'm in Psy23 president. Um, we are currently planning our first event, which will be the week after reading week, hopefully. Um, it's going to be a pub style trivia night. We're very excited for it. Um, we're also working on some merch plans for the year, um, which hopefully I'll have more information on soon. Um, I think that's about all for Psy23 year exec. On a personal note, I just installed some blinds in my room and I got to use power tools um, and it felt very engineering-y, so that was fun. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, power tool expert Wyman. <laughs> um, moving on to Psy to Forever Frosh. Uh, oh, uh, I repeat Psy to Four President. Uh, Frosh. 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 Rush. Rush. Well, we're going to be working on having uh, merch up and running by the end of the month, hopefully. And we are still working on filling some vacant positions on council and on our exec. And something that's really operational at the moment, our tweeting page is going really strong. I recommend to any everyone to follow that, Queen Side 24. And that's uh, it for the time being. Perfect. Thank you, President Pekit. And then finally, moving on to uh, Psy2, no nickname, five. Psy2, five. 
Frush. Frush. Green Button, Psy25 president. Um, we all just got elected, so we're all just settling into our roles. And we had our first meeting yesterday. We're working uh, to get training for our treasurer and myself. We're also looking for a few extra members, so a scribe. And uh, we've contacted the year meme page to ask if they would be interested. As well as we're also looking for a year merchant and two webmasters. And we elected our section representatives. And over the next two weeks, we're planning to set up social media accounts and our website. And we've started brainstorming for future events and merchandise. And that is all. Thank you, President Button. Thank you, Sci25, coming to your very first council. Good job. Lots of representation on the elected positions. All right. Well, well, that does bring us to the last part of the agenda, which is statements and questions by members. And I am just, you know, glancing at my statements and questions by members speakers queue. And I'm not sure if it's a relic, but Vice President Sai Tutu Merton. Did you have a statement or question? Uh, that would be a relic. A relic. We love a relic. <laughs> All right. Seeing no statements and or questions by members. Motion to close council. Second. Second. I never get those. All right. Motion to close council. Motion, motion passes. Motion passes very fast. Good work, everybody. Woo! Thanks, Nick. Yeet. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your hard work. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, point of President Bakit. <laughs> Is that a point of information? Oh yeah, I have I have a question for Kai. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can you stop the recording, my? Zoom has switched. Yeah, I, I sure can. <laughs>